Good morning. Good morning and welcome to The Morning Report. My name is Willie Lawson. The Morning Report is a production of FightBackMedia.com, 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 and FightBackMediaTV.com. I trust that you are well this glorious day. It is about 1030 here on the East Coast. Uh, it is about 87 degrees, 86 degrees. Uh, 86 degrees of my glasses. <laughs> Just wanted to see if it was... And again, if you watch, let me know if you would rather this uh, because of the glare of the glasses. Let me show you the glare of the glasses. I mean, this, I don't I don't have the, the nice glasses with no glare. There we go. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I can see here. 86 degrees and sunny. Uh, so... And that's and that and that right up there is the there's my light, of course. So, any case, I, I know what you're going to complain about. You complain you complain about the background is too active. I know, I like it. Uh, so, complain about it if you want to. In any case, <laughs> uh, it is fantastic uh, that you guys are here. It's it, it it's really nice. I like the fact that we've been able to put up videos both on YouTube and on Rumble. Uh, I, I really do, and I'm I'm enjoying a delicious cup of coffee from my um, November 390 uh, Golf Mike mug, Premier One driver. Actually, it's, it, it's, the story is real quick. The story is that um, one of the a couple of the first mugs I got were improperly printed, uh, and I let I let Greg know, and Greg is so cool. Greg sent me out made sure they sent me out another one. And the second one they sent me was also misprinted. So he sent me out a third one, which is which is printed correctly. And the other day I was sitting on the couch and broke off the handle, which my son fixed. So I'm putting that back in operation soon. In any case, thank you ever so much for um, spending some time with us here. Uh, the, um, the stories today are, I think, are typical of the stories that we have been covering. Uh, because life is right now very, very bizarre. Um, there are still pro-abortion protests going on in front of the Supreme Court. And you have to wonder why. Uh, because that isn't going to change. They're not going to wake... You know, the Supreme Court... You know, I want, I want to tell the uh, protesters, the Supreme Court's not going to wake up um, tomorrow morning and go... Yeah, we got it wrong on row. We're gonna we're gonna reverse our reversal. Not going to happen. I mean, if you are interested in showing, you know what, in showing the patriarchy, whatever, um, that you're not going to stand for this second uh, class citizen treatment, then you need to practice the democracy you keep talking about and go to you know run some candidates elect some candidates in your state and do what California is doing. Put Planned Parent uh, clinics in high schools. That's what you ought to do. Uh, because it, protesting in front of the Supreme Court is stupid. And what's even more stupid is that uh, Alex, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Elian Omar um, pretending to be arrested during the protest to prove that they have solidarity. Jesus. Uh, there was a, um, and, and, and why I mentioned that is, there was a primary in Maryland yesterday. Primaries are going on right now. The process for 2022, the midterm elections has started. And I just don't, I don't get the gut feeling um, that a lot of people understand that the process has started. Um, legacy media and others have, have some of us so focused on 2024 and Trump that we are missing the most important moment of uh, what could be of our history moving forward as a nation, this midterm election. It's not the 2024 election. Not at this point, it isn't. Right now, it's this election. It's like if you're in a car and you, um, you, you need to turn down Main Street because the place you're going to is on Main Street. 
and you miss that turn. You may be able to get back to Main Street, but it's going to be a lot more difficult. You need to make that turn, and that turn is the 2022 midterm elections. That's what that turn is. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that, about what happened in Maryland a little bit. Um, and um, we're going to talk about the New York City mayor. That dude. Oh, jeez. That dude. He's complaining that there are too many immigrants arriving from the southern border in New York. Now, when the left is talking about bring us your huddled masses and we should be letting people into the country, that statue is in the in New York Harbor. So it would make sense that the people who have seen it, who are coming for, who are the people who are actually coming for a better life, would be will be yearning to go to where that statue is because that would seem to be the most accepting place in the nation, right? But it, but instead, the New York City mayor is like, oh, these people coming here on the southern borders, uh, it's sucking down our resources and stuff. Well, New York City, one of the largest metropolitan areas in the world, would seem to be a lot better suited for an influx of people than some border town in freaking Texas, don't you think? We'll talk about that, too. All right, again, I don't do this anymore. Um, I definitely don't, don't do it on, on a regular basis, uh, but I'm going to do it now. If you like what we do, if you enjoy what we do, um, we are looking for sponsors. We're looking for benefactors. Um, and we are at a week in the summertime. And the summertime is always, always hard. Um, when I used to do this and teach, uh, summertime, if, if you've ever been, if you've been in education, summertime is peanut butter and jelly time, peanut butter, jelly time, peanut butter, jelly time. Um, that's your that's your snack <laughs> to hold you over between, you know, between meals because, you know, peanut butter jelly used to be cheap. And uh, peanut summer is peanut butter, jelly time, peanut butter, jelly time. Um, and the same thing has happened when we're talking about moving this entity forward and not putting it on hi hiatus. And I've done that before, too. Not interested in that. Um, so we could really use your help. Um, we have a Patreon page um, that you guys can sign up for. Um, because right now, the Spreaker account where we do the audio podcast is um, not working. Hopefully, we can get it working. Hopefully, we can get it working sometime, sometime today. Um, so this broadcast is only going to be on YouTube and only going to be on Rumble. And I'll be promoting the out of it um hopefully you would you would find it in your heart to um you know toss us a few you know a few ducats to make this happen uh it's also going to be on the website fightbackmedia.com website uh, that would be very very helpful all right um with with the cat you know with the fightback media cash app which is fightback media the cash app for fightback media is fightback media uh hopefully if i can figure out how to do this on filmora it's going to be underneath, right there, right there. Cat, Fightback Media, not Cash App, would be very, very helpful. All right, um, let's get started. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, New York City Mayor Eric Adams, of course, Democrat, is sounding the alarm over the number of immigrants released by Border Control who have somehow made their way to the Big Apple. New York, where a lot of their relatives are, frankly. Um, one of the biggest, America's biggest cities, and now are overwhelming city services. Yeah. Uh, New, uh, NBC New York reports Adams is calling on the federal government to help the city deal with the influx of people who illegally crossed the U.S.-Mexico border, turned themselves into Border Patrol, and have been released. Because that is, they people, people figure crap out. You know, that's, 
that's you know that's always the funny part. Uh, people will figure stuff out. Uh, they will. They'll figure stuff out. Um, so they figured out that this is the safest way to go, and they figured out that this is the the legal way to go. Even after breaking the law initially, this is a, this is a legal way to go. Cross the border, turn yourselves in, get a hearing date, because now you have a hearing date. They didn't hold you. They told you to come back. They didn't tell you to go back to Mexico. They told you to come back for your hearing. So you are in New York. You know, the city that the city that never sleeps, you know. And you are waiting for your hearing date. And in the meantime, a lot of your relatives and your friends are already in New York and they're saying, Find a way to make find find a way to make your way to New York. Yes, I will cash app you some money, or Venmo you some money, because that's what's happening. And people are finding their way to New York. They're flying, or they're on a on a on a bus, or whatever. Probably not flying, but on a bus for sure. Finding their way to New York City. Uh, due to New York's um, right to shelter mandate, a homeless asylum seeker must be placed in a shelter, which means what? That somebody who is in need of need of a shelter in New York, who is an American citizen and a citizen of New York state and a citizen of New York may be put on the street. Cur currently, uh, New York City has experienced a market increase in the number of asylum seekers who are arriving from Latin America and other regions. Uh, in some instances, families are arriving sent uh, on buses sent by Texas and Arizona governments. They because you, you know why? Because they they're small, small, tiny border towns cannot absorb that many people. And it would seem like one of the largest cities in the world on the friggin' planet would be much better suited to do so than some cow town border town on this on on the on the border. That only makes sense. It only makes sense. While in other cases, it appears that individuals are being sent by the federal government. Adam said in a statement, adding that over twenty eight hundred asylum seekers recently entered the shelter system, which means 2,800 homeless people in New York have exited the shelter system. Because you can't eat metal and poop a bed. Adams blamed Texas and Arizona for busing people from the southern border to his town, but the buses from those states are, be are only being sent to D.C. You know, we heard that story, right, where, where Governor Abbott put people on a bus and send them to D.C., y'all deal with them. I'm, is it possible that some of those buses got rerouted to 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 um, New York? Not that far trip at that point. He says this, if they need financial help, they should ask for it instead of heartlessly sending asylum seekers on their way with a one-way ticket. And Adam, um, and Adam spokes per person said, of Texas governors, Texas and Arizona governors. So the, their idea is, well, you should just keep them and beg for the money while they destroy what infrastructure you have because you can't handle the, you can't. It just makes more sense to send them along. I think that, I think that really it isn't heartless to send them along. It's probably more compassionate to send people to where the help is to have them suffer here where you are while you're hoping to get help for them. It's ridiculous. The, the New York mayor is practicing what people normally who are virtual sig signaling practice, the whole not in my backyard. We need more prisons, but not out there, not in my yard, not where I can see it. We here in Florida say, you know what, we need a drill for oil, but not so it destroys my view of the Gulf. 
maybe it can destroy you know destroy their view of the Gulf in in um, Texas or in um, Louisiana or Alabama or, or Mississippi, but not where I live. I don't want to be able to sniff or see a bump that may be an oil rig. Actually, you can't because they're so far out. Nobody has that sort of vision, but that's a whole other thing, right? So New York, um, Adams, Gary Adams, Eric Adams is practicing the, yes, we should let these poor, pitiful people into our nation, but they can't come here. Not in my backyard. In the month of June, Border Patrol agents along the southern border encountered over 200,000, almost a quarter million illegal border crossers. A majority of those are ones who are willingly turning themselves in so they can be processed and released. I told you they have figured it out. People will figure it out. People, people are, are smart in that sense. They, they will figure it out. This is strained resources in the border towns, which has prompted Texas and Arizona to send people to D.C. on a voluntary basis. Once you get processed, we got nowhere for you. We have nothing for you. We don't have anything for you. And should we just wait while people are starving in these camps? Starving, robbing people, I mean, whatever they do, whatever people have to do to survive. Or should we give them hope and send them to some place that there may be help? D.C. seems to be a loving and inviting place. Washington, I mean, New York seems to be a, a loving and inviting place, at least by the rhetoric of people like Eric Adams. And uh, uh, Alexander Ocasio Cortez. Off you go. Good luck. I'm just going to say that these people suck. They just suck. All right. There was a um, a primary yesterday again, and I want to really, really try to get you to understand that the process for the 2022 elections have already started. One of the things that I, I you know, I hate most is when I'm looking up, uh, I'm, I'm trying to find people's voting histories and I can do that. Now, I can't find out who they voted for. Just chill the hell out. Um, but I can find out how often they vote. Um, because I have, I have access to certain things that I can find out how, how often they voted. And what I find out is when looking for what we call super voters is that um, there are people who are, for instance, I'll, I'll just throw out the numbers. The higher the number, the better. Who who may be a, the super voters uh, are 90 midterm, 90 and above midterm, 90 and above general election. Um, and, then, and then there, of course, there are people who vote never election or 99 midterm, 99 um, general election, 99, 99. Those people vote all the time. They vote in every election. And then there are people who are 197. One for, for midterm, which means they never vote in the midterms. They only vote in the general election. That kind of voting will Main, will maintain the status quo. Because if there isn't a change in candidates, that change in candidates happens in the midterm. When people are screaming, the same, a lot of the same people are screaming for, we need term limits. Well, the primary can be the term limit that you're looking for and double as not only a term limit, but the change you're looking for. You don't have to wait until, until the time's out. You don't have to send that person back for two more or four more or six more years of their BS. When you can primary them and give them one term, two years to screw it up, four years to screw it up, or six years to screw it up, and then you replace them. It seems like this nation is uh, all, 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 all the time screaming about one of the greatest democracies in the history of the world, just sort of pulling back from actually 
practicing, you know, the democracy that we keep saying that we have. Now, stop it. I know that we are a constitutional republic, but there is a democratic element to what we do. That's what voting is. And we seem to, every time that we have an opportunity to do that, we don't want to. We want an, sort of an autocratic thing that's already done for us and we don't have to participate. It's worrisome. Anyway, in the um, Maryland governor Republican primary, um, Dan Cox uh, won with 56% of the vote over Kelly Schultz, Robin Flicker, and Joe Werner. Uh, that is, an, I, I believe that is an open seat right now. It is. It's an open seat. So this is going to be interesting. Um, and right now, Westmore uh, it won. Well, probably, well, he hasn't been declared a winner, but uh, looks like he's going to win the. Um, yeah, as of this morning, Westmore is going to win the Democrat uh, primary for that seat. So it looks like Westmore and Dan Cox will fight it out. Now, what's encouraging? Well, I don't know. What's alarming? <laughs> what's encouraging? Maybe the word I should be using is, is alarming. Now, there aren't as many Republicans in Maryland as there are in a place like Texas or Florida. The number of votes counted in the Maryland primary, Republican primary, are two, 235,000 Republican votes for the four, for those four candidates. Over 373,000 uh, votes for the Democrat candidate. I have to hope that Republicans aren't staying home or not participating in the primaries. Primaries do something else too. They give you momentum. They give you momentum. Chris Chaffee won the um, Maryland Senate Republican primary and will face um, incumbent Chris Van Hollen who crushed Michelle Smith 77% uh, to 22%. Again, when we talk about participation in the Republican Senate primary, there were, there were less than 200,000 votes counted and over 366,000 votes counted for the Democrat. It's, got, it's an uphill battle, and that's why we have to participate. The process to, we need to take our country back, has already started. Are you participating? Or are you sitting home waiting for somebody else to do it? Are you waiting for a a, a, a knight on a white horse to, to ride in and save your ass? Not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I've said this before, and I borrowed this from Barack Obama. We are the ones that we've been waiting for. Which means you ought to say, you, point the finger at yourself, I am the one, I am the one that I've been waiting for. Get busy. Because there is opportunity, folks. Because we have such ridiculousness going on absolute, positive ridiculousness going on right now. I mean, it's just, it's, just it's, sometimes, it's sometimes hard to believe. It is sometimes difficult to believe. I never thought that I'd see it like this. Or maybe I, I never even considered that it would ever be like this. Maybe, maybe that's it. I don't know. Oh, we're also looking for a coffee sponsor, too. So if you've, um, if you we were on coffee, or you 
brew your own beans and you want us to talk about you in a good way here on the program because you provide coffee to us and a few ducats, let me know. Send me an email at fightbackmedia at gmail.com, fightbackmedia at gmail.com, fightbackmedia at gmail.com. Can't wait. Can't wait to hear from you. You know, both both Paul and I enjoy a delicious cup of coffee while I'm talking to you in the morning. And, you know, I enjoy a delicious cup of coffee while talking to you late at night. <laughs> yeah, so so do I sleep? Mm, no, not much. Not much. Um, this is good. You're going to like this. Reportedly arrested for civil disobedience. That is, blocking traffic outside the Supreme Court in protest of the recent Dobbs decision. More than 30 radical, de- thir- more than 30 radical Democrats, including several lawmakers, took their antics a bit too far beyond the point of believability. I'm going to put the video in here, right here, um, of Representative, uh, 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 excuse me, Representative Alexandria Castillo Cortez, Democrat from New York, being led away from the front of the Supreme Court by Capitol Police officers with their hands behind her back as if in handcuffs. Now, I'm going to say, girl is smart because she could have just been led away with her hands on her side. And people would have said, well, she's being pulled away because she's a representative and they want to make sure that she didn't get hurt, blah, 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 whatever. But no, 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 no. She, she knew, she, she, she knows instinctively that it is a better look if she looks like she's being handcuffed and being led away to um, the, the gulag. Hmm. But then she raises her fist over her head, revealing that the arms behind your back look was purely choreographed political theater before then going back to looking, um, pretending to be in, be in cuffs. That whole raise your hand above your head, power, socialism, whatever, all, all, that, really, all, all that really means. So you've seen, uh, you've seen, you've seen already, I already put those videos in before this, so that way you can see it. So Ilya Ilian Omar tweets. Today I was re- arrested by participating in civil disobedience action with my fellow members of Congress outside uh, the Supreme Court. I will continue to do everything in my power to raise the alarm about the assault on our reproductive rights. Here's what Ilian Omar from Minnesota is doing. I almost said that this is what she doesn't get, but she, no, 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 she gets it. And, and this is what we have to stop doing. I keep telling you guys this. We have to stop pretending these people are stupid because they're not stupid. Here's the people who, who support her don't. Here's what people who support this behavior don't get. We have in our nation's august bodies, the Senate and the House of Representatives, we have, which which ought to be the most American places that exist. They should be the 535 of, of the America's biggest cheerleaders and the America's biggest supporter of America's systems and institutions. We have them railing actually against the foundations of America. We have a, a we have people in the who are in the House of Representatives who are railing against the Supreme Court, and they're railing against the Supreme Court because the Supreme Court said, "Hey, listen, this is a decision that we're going to send back to the states." So people, so people, the people 
can vote and have their voice. The people can have their voice. Thumbnail. That's what we're doing. It is the democracy that they keep talking about. It's a democracy that CNN and MSNBC keeps gushing about uh, how th Trump was a threat to them, threat to our democracy. Here's some democracy for you. You don't want that. No, we don't want that. We don't want people to be able to decide because we're afraid. What we're scared of is that people will disagree with us and I won't get my way. Just tell everybody what to do. Let, let, let me be able to, to tell everybody what to do. That way I get what I want. Vote on it? Go through the process? No. Mm -mm. That's what these people are. Unless Capitol Police are now using handcuffs that allow arrestees to just raise one arm to wave at supporters, uh, there weren't restraints involved. Well, that didn't stop some of the media from taking taking the bait uh, set by Representative Omar and Ocasio-Cortez. Uh, all these people, or a number of people, just kept tweeting that, oh, they're being arrested. This is this is so blah, blah, blah. And, and you know, it's and it's all part of the theater, the kabuki theater of the left. Um, it's the emperor's new clothes. These people kept reporting what a beautiful set of clothing the emperor is wearing. They knew the emperor was naked, but they kept reporting that. They said that the only only the most erudite people could see could actually see the beauty of what the emperor was wearing. And these people tweeted this. These people got on CNN and said this. They got on MSNBC and said this. They got on Fox News and said this. The only people who could see this, this beautiful, beautiful um, set of clothing the emperor was wearing are the most erudite and woke people. Although the rest of us could clearly see that Emperor was naked. The rest of us could clearly see that, I mean, that Ocasio-Cortez and Representative Omar were not handcuffed and they were not arrested and they were not thrown in jail. And there is no picture of them being thrown in jail. And we, because we caught Alexandria lying before. Where she seems, where she has her, her, her hand, you remember the one where she has her hand over her over her eyes and she sort of doubled over because it was supposed to be this um this facility that was that was holding children uh that were separated from, from from their families and when we found out what it really was it was she was at a fence in front of a parking lot you remember remember that let me see remember that you see you see that remember that and she pretends that she's being handcuffed, and and none of these people that being that are being led away in those videos that you just saw were handcuffed because they weren't being arrested. They were being moved, but they were not being arrested. My name is Willie Lawson. This has been the Morning Report for July twentieth, two thousand twenty-two, in the year of our Lord. So. Um, again, if you are interested in helping us out, we'll really, really super appreciate it. Um, there is, again, the Cash App right there. Hopefully, if I can figure out how to do that. If not, this looks, this looks really super stupid, but hopefully I can figure that out in post-production. In any case, until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody, and for goodness sakes, and I mean this from the bottom of my, my recently repaired heart, recently, 2014. Take care of yourself. Peace.